In this video, we're going to talk a little bit more about the chmod command that we use in Unix to change file and directory permissions. Um, so I'll talk about that command a little bit. That's um, so. Let me jump on over to Putty here, and oh, let's get this set, and we'll look at where. First off, where am I even? All right, I'm in my home directory, so there should be a public underscore HTML in there. So I'll do an ls negative l so that I can see the permissions on these files. And we're the one we're mostly worried about is this public HTML uh, because that is the web root for Apache for my web pages. These are the permissions that we'll be trying to modify using the command chmod. The last letter there, D, I know I've mentioned it many times, but I'll say it again. That just tells, it's not a permission. It just tells us whether this thing here, named thing here, is a directory or a file. See, without that D, I can't really tell if, if we're dealing with directories or files. Sometimes I just know, like I know what this is. It's a directory because I know it's in my, in my, in my home directory. <laughs> Right, so the important thing that we're going to need to know for Apache, we're going to need to make sure that Apache has execute permissions on all directories and read permissions on all files. So, and and execute it needs execute permission on directories because the opening in Windows it will be called double clicking on a directory is an execution. So we need to have an X here. Uh -huh. And I'll explain these, these letters a little bit more to you. We need to have an X there on all directories. And we need to have an R here. I'll ch choose a different file. This one is a file, right? .cc it does not have a D here. This file needs to have an R there if Apache is going to be able to uh, serve this file. Or, or Apache, we need to give Apache permission to read a file, and we need to give Apache permission to open a directory. So that's the nature of the R and the X. So let's talk about these numbers a little bit more here, or these all these characters that are there. All right, that set of characters. There's a total of nine characters there. Three sets. We're going to think of them as three sets of three. So there's three here. That's the first set of three. And then you'll see there's another set of three there and a third set of three. The first set of three are the permissions for the owner, which is listed right here. In this case, I'm the owner, right? On your system, you're gonna see that you're the owner, right? So I can give myself, well, the, the letters themselves mean read, write, execute, R, W, X. They're always in that order for each of the three groups. So I can apply RWX permissions for the owner. The second set of three is for something called the group. I can apply RWX or any combination of those for group. The same for the third set, which is everyone else on the system. And as it turns out, Apache is another member that's just a, a user of Copeland, right? A, a particular user, but nonetheless, it, it is not a human user, or she. It is not a, a human user. It's a software user, but it's still a user of the system. And that's why we're often concerned about this third group. But keep in mind that it does mean all other users. So on Copeland, I believe there are, so, there are over 20-some thousand users of this machine logged in, right? people that are members of the University of Delaware community. Uh, we all have access to this machine, so not only are we setting permissions for Apache, but by default, everyone else gets the same settings, so we want to keep that in mind. We do want to watch out for right giving right permission to everyone, and generally speaking, we're not going to do that. We're generally on this third group, will not provide a W. It's okay to read, 
it's okay and execute is only necessary on a directory let's say so for a file we should only provide read not read write right that's just a general rule of thumb here all right so we know there's three groups of three numbers we know what the rwx stands for here's the thing here's where the kind of the rubber meets the road here if I wanted to change the permissions of, say, public underscore HTML, I'm going to use the chmod command because that's what it's for, changing permissions. M-O-D. Right? Then I'm going to come up with uh, some numbers here. In my case, I'll choose 711 for this case. I, I guess I didn't explain group that well. Group is used in, in the case where you know, I want to restrict all users, so everyone, the third set of three, from doing too much, but I may want to put together a group of people that can modify a file, but not everyone. In that case, I would create a group, and it will have a number, and I will assign select people. Let's say my, I have a group of 10 people I want working on a particular project. I would assign them to that group, and then I could, I could provide write permission the middle one, um, two members of that group, right? So it's more people than just me, the owner, but less people than the entire system would have write permission. So that's the use of the middle set of three. In our case here in this class, we're not really using them. So I, I'm just defaulting by giving the middle user, the group, uh, the same the same permissions that I give everyone else on the machine. So I've effectively just made group the same as everyone, right? Since we're not using it. My, interestingly enough, I can give and, and remove permissions from myself too, as owner. And I might do that to try and protect files from uh, me inadvertently doing something that I shouldn't have done to one of my files, like overriding it or deleting it or something. I can remove um, write permission from a file, so I don't want to, maybe I don't want to accidentally write to it again. And then when it comes time for me to write again to that file, I'll, I'll force myself to explicitly change the permissions so that I, I can't inadvertently or accidentally do something to it. That's why I would want to do something like that. I, I'm generally not doing it. I just don't do that. I just don't make that mistake. But you could, you could do that. And then you could turn around and just, since you're the owner of the file, you can, you can provide yourself back the permissions back. You can write them right back. So we know what owner is. That's the owner, me. In this case, me. In your case, it's you. We know a group is something we're not using. And we know what everyone else in the system. That's everyone else, including Apache, the person we're most concerned with here. So I'm trying to set permissions. And I'm giving myself seven. I'm giving group one and I'm grouping everybody else one. So each is a three digit number. Each digit represents the individual set of, uh, the individual sets of these, the sets of three. So the first set of three owner is getting a seven. The second set of three group is getting a one. And the third set of, of users, which is everyone else in the system, is getting a one. So um, I'm doing one for the second, each of the second two, because I'm just, whatever I'm setting for everyone else, the third one, or the third digit, which is a one, I'm also just by default setting group. So the middle or the second digit is also getting a one. So you see it as a three digit number and you wonder probably, well, 711, how'd you come up with 711? Well, I, I didn't come up with the whole number just like that. Let me first give the second argument here. I'm trying to affect public underscore HTML, right? So the first argument is a three-digit number. First argument to chmod. The second argument is the file or folder or slash directory that I'm trying to place these permissions, parentheses, 711, on, right? So I'm trying to give public, in this case for this example, public underscore HTML. I'm trying to set the permissions on public HTML to 711 using the command chmod. 
So in other words, I would say this as the command CHMOD wants two arguments, a number here at first, a three digit number, and then the name of the thing it's supposed to be applying those permissions to. So now let's come up with how do we get the 7-Eleven? In, in fact, more specifically, how, for instance, do we get the seven? And then how do we get the one and the one? So it's not that we're coming up with 711. We're concerned with a seven, a one, and a one, All right? Where each of those digits corresponds to a, a set here, right? So if I want, we're going to think of that rather than going into the, the binary numbering system, I'm just going to assign dollar values to these things. So I'm going to say for each set, the rightmost permission, which would be execute permission, right? It would be like that one for that for this file that we're working on. I have an X in there right now, right? There, I have there's, the D doesn't count. It's not a permission. Then there's an R, W, and an X, right? So I want an X there. Therefore, I'll count that as one dollar. Now the W, the second space or the middle, I'm is twice that much, it's $2. The third spot, the R, where the R is, is twice the previous, so it's $4. All you have to do to get the, the digit is sum up the amount of money. <laughs> so if you want all three of them, then it's $4 plus $2 plus $1, add those up and you get seven. The next one, also the same way. The first spot here, Let's make sure I'm looking at the right one, public HTML. The first spot needs to have an X in it, so I need a $1. The second spot has nothing in it. So um, I do not need to spend the $2. So, so far I still owe $1. In, in what we're looking at here, I have an R there, all right? But I'm gonna take that R away. So I don't want to spend the $4 there either. So we see why I'm getting seven. I want every one of these set, R, W, X, for owner. For group, and I'm really just dis discovering what I'm gonna do for group by looking at everyone else. I really, since this is a directory, I'm looking at this one, sorry, this one. Since this is a directory, I do wanna provide execution, X, so that the directory can be open, but I don't wanna provide anything else. Really. So I, I actually don't want that R there. So I only want one, do, one here, right? One dollar. And then I'll do the same thing for the middle one. So we're going to do one dollar for it too. So that's how we got, that's how I got the seven, one, one. Seven for owner and just one, read, read. All right, then I'll hit enter. No error. I'll do an LS, negative L. And we'll get my permissions back and we'll see that I did in fact get it this way. There's an X and an X, right, for, for everyone in the system and for group, and then owner has all permissions. It's the most expensive one, $7. <laughs> I think that that, I think that that should help you understand uh, how CHMOD works. It's really not super complicated, you just need to see it and, and it all makes sense. So if there's a problem with it, let me know and I'll see if I have to there's something else I can do to help you understand, but I think you've got it. I'm confident that you